Hey everyone, I'm Nick, and welcome to another episode of Parallel C++. So in this episode of the series, we're going to be talking about how we can implement a parallel version of Gaussian elimination using MPI. So I think a great way to learn parallel programming is by trying to apply parallelism to some useful algorithm or operation. Now we've seen an example of this in the past with Gaussian elimination. So we saw how we could implement a serial version of this algorithm, and we also saw how we could parallelize it uh, using our compiler directives in OpenMP. Now, because we have this, um, you know, this baseline knowledge of what this algorithm is and the basics of how it can be parallelized, we're going to see how we can apply a different uh, mode of parallelization, right? A different programming model uh, to get kind of a similar effect here. So we're going to be seeing how we can parallelize our Gaussian elimination uh, with MPI or this message passing interface. So let's go ahead and get started. And the first thing we're going to do is have a bit of a refresher on what our serial code looks like. So we'll open up this baseline.cpp. So as a reminder of what our you know, Gaussian elimination code is doing, it's we're trying to make this upper triangular matrix. So um, you know, the bottom left corner of our matrix is going to be all zeros. Those are the elements we're trying to eliminate. Along the diagonal or the pivots, uh, we're going to have all ones. And then we're going to have the rest of our values in this upper right corner of our matrix. So what we're going to be starting off with is just a very small matrix that we're going to be looking at the values of and making sure that our serial implementation matches our parallel implementation. So we're going to create a random number generator with a fixed seed so we can directly compare the results. Then we're going to create a small matrix here. So just a, a two to the four by two to the four matrix. So 16 elements um, in this square matrix, um, or rather a 16 by 16 square matrix. Then we have our code that's actually for our Gaussian elimination. So for every single row inside of our matrix, we're going to do our pivot calculation. So this is what's going to give us the ones along the diagonals. And then we're going to eliminate all the elements um, in the same column as our pivot, right, in the later rows. So that's what we're doing down here in this elimination loop. Uh, and we saw that, you know, in our opening P uh, example of parallelism with Gaussian elimination, we would put something like a pragma OMP4, right, uh, in this loop. So we would try to do this elimination in parallel after one of our threads, say, calculates the pivot row. Okay, so that's going to be our baseline serial code uh, here. So we'll, we'll compute this for a small matrix, and then we'll print out that matrix to compare results. Let's go ahead and see how we can implement this with MPI. So we'll go ahead, go ahead and open this one mpi.cpp, and we're going to see a lot of uh, familiar faces here when it comes to you know our overall or general MPI setup. So we're going to be including mpi.h, initializing MPI with this MPI init. Then we're going to get the size of our communicator. So you know how many processes did we did we launch, and then of course uh, we're going to get the individual IDs of each process or the ranks. Then we're going to have the same overall size of our matrix here. So a uh, 16 by 16 element square matrix, except we're going to do something a little bit differently this time. We're going to divide it up um, across our different processes here. So each process is going to get in rows of the matrix. So we're going to scatter this matrix across our different processes. So from there, the main buffers that we're going to be working with, uh, with our message passing, is going to be one, our matrix here. So this is going to be our full matrix. It's going to be initialized by rank zero. So this is what we're initially going to scatter out to all of our processes uh, and then collect back, right, our partial results for. Then we have our chunk, right? This is our M chunk. Uh, this is going to be the chunk of the matrix that we give to each process. So it's going to be our in rows of the matrix. And then we're going to have this pivot row um, that we're going to send to each of our processes, right? So one process will do the pivot calculation and then send that result to all of our other uh, processes so they can do the elimination on their chunk of the matrix. Okay, so that's going to be our basic setup here, right? And then, of course, rank zero is just going to create, um, you know, our random number matrix here. And again, with the same seed for a random number generator as we used with our serial implementation. So we can directly compare the results. Now, the first thing we have to do is, of course, send our matrix to our different processes. So we're going to do that with our MPI scatter uh, command um, or routine. So this collective communication routine. So with MPI scatter, we're going to send in rows of MPI floats from our matrix into our chunks that belong to each of our processes. So each chunk of in rows of MPI floats is going to get in rows of our total matrix here, right? In those big contiguous chunks. 
Okay, so that's how we're going to distribute our you know, parts of our matrix or different processes. And then we get to our actual loop here. So this is where we're going to do Gaussian elimination. So we're going to go through the rows of our matrix, but remember, um, each of our processes is only mapped um, a certain number of rows here, right? So they only need to perform a certain number of um, you know, elimination steps. So for example, our first row in our matrix has zero elimination steps. Our second row of our matrix has one elimination step that it has to go through. So we only need to go through, you know, from our starting row, right, all the way to this end row, right? That's the, um, what we have to calculate for. So once we've done all of our work that we need to do for a particular process, um, we can just drop out of this loop, right? We have no more work to do. So we're gonna go from zero to end row here. Okay, so from here, right, the first thing we're going to do is figure out who this row belongs to, right? Um, so which rank does this row of our global matrix belong to? And from there, right, if we find out that that row belongs to us, that means we're responsible for the pivot calculation. So what we do is a calculation to determine, you know, what is that row going to be in our local chunk of our matrix? And then we just do our normal pivot calculation, the exact same operation as we did in our serial implementation. However, after we've done our pivot uh, row calculation, we have to make sure to send that to our other processes so our other processes can do elimination. So that's what we're going to do in this loop here. We're going to send these non-blocking uh, send messages to our later ranks here. So starting from, you know, whatever rank we are doing this pivot calculation plus one, all the way until uh, num tasks minus one here, right? We only need to send the messages forward, right? Previous ranks, right? Once we get further down into our computations, um, have already completed all their work. They don't need uh, this pivot information. Only the later ranks do. So we're going to send this, um, you know, asynchronously or this non-blocking sends here, and then after we do these sends we're going to go ahead and uh, just do our elimination for the remaining rows in our chunk of the matrix. So from local row plus one, all the way until our last row of our chunk, we're just gonna do this normal uh, elimination of the elements in that column here. Now, because we did these, um, uh, these non-blocking sins here, that means that we sent these messages before um, you know, confirming that they were received on the other side. So what we're going to do at the end of each iteration of this loop is just call this MPI wait to make sure that our sins here uh, made it to their destinations. So we're going to do that every iteration of this loop. So that's what we're going to do if, um, you know, this row is mapped uh, to this particular rank here, right? We're responsible for doing the pivot. Now, what happens if we're a later rank, right, that this row isn't ma mapped to? Well, that's where we have this else side of this uh, if else statement. So, you know, if we're a, you know, later rank that, you know, we don't have to do this pivot calculation, we're just going to be receiving that pivot row here. So we're going to do a blocking receive because we can't do any of this calculation until we receive this row. So we're going to wait to receive our pivot row of dim elements of MPI floats from the rank that the uh, pivot row was mapped to. So from the mapped rank. Then we're going to just do our local elimination here, right? So the exact same code as we kind of have up here, right? Um, so not much difference there. In fact, we could really factor it out into its own function if we wanted to, uh, just to make this more clear. Okay, so that's going to be the basics of our uh, Gaussian elimination, um, you know, overall computations. Um, for all the rows inside of our matrix, we're gonna figure out who this row is mapped to, right? Who, which rank? If it's mapped to you know, our rank, we're going to do the pivot calculations, send that pivot row to our other processes, and then do our local eliminations. Then, right, if you know, that row wasn't mapped to us and we still have work to do, we wait to receive that pivot row and then eliminate that uh, element from our uh, local chunk of our matrix here, this M chunk. So after we've done all that, we have completely done Gaussian elimination. The only issue is, is that our result is scattered across these different processes. So we need to combine them back together. We need to do the opposite of that scatter. We need to do a gather. So the final thing we're going to do here is call this MPI gather. So with this MPI gather, we're going to collect up the M chunk uh, rows of our matrices, right? So in rows from each of our other processes, so uh, of these floats, and those are going to be collected into our matrix in rank zero here. So we're just collecting our chunks of the matrix from our different processes 
into our final result here that we're going to store in that matrix, um, you know, right, that we initialized earlier, right? So we're going to override it with the results here. And then, right, finally, we're just going to print out our small matrix here. So that's what we're going to do to start off with. So let's go ahead and quit out of here, and we can compile and run both of these pieces of code here. So we can just compare the results and make sure we're doing something that's functionally correct. So we'll first com uh, compile our baseline with O3 optimizations. And then we can also compile um, our MPI code with O3 optimizations using this MPI C++ driver. Okay, so after that, we have our two executables here. Let's go ahead and run them and make sure that we're still getting the correct result. So we'll go ahead and run our serial implementation. And let me just resize the window so we can see all the elements. So you can see how we got this upper triangular form of our matrix here. So our lower triangle is all zeros. Along the pivots, it's all ones. And then we have all of our other values in the upper right-hand corner of our matrix. Okay, so let's go ahead and run with MPI run. And we'll just do, say, four um, processes to start off with. Um, let's go ahead and run our MPI example of this exact same Gaussian elimination with the same input here. And what we see is we get um, identical results here, right, uh, for our computation. So if we just spot check a couple of values here, you can see, you know, this, you know, 1.00972 is the same here. If we go somewhere in the middle of our matrix, right, this negative 1.39474, uh, same value that we got here. Uh, you know, one of these in values is 0 0.991016. It's the same value as we got here, right? If we compared all the values, we'd see we got identical results between our baseline and our MPI parallel version of this code. Okay, so we've got some confidence that we're getting the right answer, right? We're doing the right thing in terms of our implementation. So from there, let's go ahead and scale up the size of our matri matrix and compare the performance, right? Uh, the reason why we're implementing this in parallel and doing all this extra work is because we want our program to run faster. So let's go ahead and go back into both of our pieces of code. So first into this baseline.cpp, and we'll get rid of this print and we'll just make a much larger matrix here. So let's do a two to the 12 by two to the 12 matrix. And we'll do the same thing for our MPI version. We'll go ahead and just delete this print that we have, and then we'll go back up to our um, a size of our matrix up here. Um, so this, you know, was originally the 16 by 16 matrix, and we'll make it a two to the 12 by two to the 12. Okay, so let's go ahead and recompile this. So we'll first compile our serial implementation again with O3 optimizations, and then we'll compile our uh, uh, we'll compile our MPI version right with the same optimization level. So let's go ahead and time both of these. So we'll first time our baseline. So we'll just call time and we'll run zero baseline. And what we see is unsurprisingly for a two to the 12 by two to the 12 square matrix doing Gaussian elimination, it takes quite a bit of time here, right? So it's it's pretty slow. In fact, it takes somewhere on the order of 10 and a half seconds. You know, it might be 10.2 or 10.7, right? Somewhere in that range. Now let's go ahead and try this with our MPI version where we've added some parallelism. So here we'll do uh, MPI run. And this time we'll do, let's just say eight um, different processes that we're going to spawn, so dash n8, and then we'll run this one MPI. Right? So we can go ahead and run this, and what we end up seeing is that we get a decent speed up, right, uh, from paralyzing our application. Um, well, let's go ahead and you know, make sure that we time it as well. So let's go ahead and do time on MPI run with eight processes again. And once it completes, um, instead of taking around you know, 10.3, 10.5 seconds, it's somewhere on the order of seven seconds here, 7.1. So we saved about 3.4 seconds here, right? A pretty large or substantial chunk of time here by adding this parallelization. Okay, so that's gonna go ahead and do it for this time. Uh, that's a you know, brief example of how we can implement uh, parallel Gaussian elimination using MPI. There's some more optimizations that we're going to be looking at, so specifically around things like doing a more cyclic striped mapping of our data. That way we don't have processes that just run out of work to do. We're going to make sure we're trying to exploit as much parallelism as we can. So we'll look at how our data mapping uh, can really affect our performance. But we'll look at that in later videos, right? And of course, you can compare this against the MPI, uh, or rather the open P parallel versions of Gaussian elimination that we looked at in previous videos. But that's going to go ahead and do it for this time. As always, you can find this or any of my other examples at github.com slash coffee before arch. But that's going to go ahead and do it for today. 
As always, I'm Nick, and I hope you have a nice day.